It's a Minimalist Monday edition of Optimal Living Daily, episode 2145, Five Signs It's Time to Stop Decluttering, by Courtney Carver of bemoresless.com, and I'm Justin Mollick, your narrator, and we're gonna jump right into our post today and continue optimizing your life. Five Signs It's Time to Stop Decluttering, by Courtney Carver of bemoresless.com. I'm a big fan of decluttering. I've spent several years doing it and writing about it. I've gotten rid of most of my stuff, rarely shop for new stuff, and have completely changed my relationship with stuff and shopping. Before decluttering, I always thought something new would change my life. I thought I deserved things because I worked so hard. I felt like I needed to own certain things to keep up. I thought shopping reduced stress. I spent a bunch of money, time, attention, and energy on my stuff. After decluttering, I find confidence in who I am, not what I own or don't own. I know if I wait 30 days before I purchase, I usually won't want it anymore. I don't worry about people judging me on the things I choose to include in my home. Instead of shopping to reduce stress, I turn to self-care. And I spend my money, time, attention, and energy on taking care of myself, people I love, and on projects and passions I really care about. I believe decluttering is a powerful part of the process of simplifying your life and creating more time and space for what you love. The problem occurs when decluttering takes over and begins to distract us from what we really want. That means something different for everyone, but when we are constantly defeated by not being simple enough or decluttered enough, we lose sight of what we are really after. The next time you are done decluttering your junk drawer, cleaning out your closet, or donating a box of stuff, stop. Before simplifying further, think about what you really want out of this life of yours. Is this a time to declutter more? Or is this a time to deepen a connection with someone you love? Is this the time to move on to your bookshelves? Or is this the time to create something new or serve in your community? You could read a book, go for a walk, or perhaps it is simply time to rest. If you aren't sure, consider these five signs it's time to stop decluttering. Do any of them resonate with you? Five signs it's time to stop decluttering. Number one, you are shopping faster than you are decluttering. If empty bookshelves and clear countertops have you sprinting to your favorite place to shop to fill up the empty space, slow down. Give yourself permission to not redecorate or shop for more. Be brave and hang out in the empty space. Take a little time to think about what you really want and need in your life right now. You might need a break to hang out in your newly decluttered space before subtracting or adding anything else. Be brave. Number two, decluttering feels like a competition or a race. There is no finish line. No one wins for having more or less stuff and trying to measure the success of your decluttering based on other people's journeys won't result in sustainable change or happiness. Hit restart on your decluttering efforts and move at a pace that works well for you. If that means stopping for a while, stop. Instead of comparing and competing away your accomplishments, zero in on what works for you. Be content. Number three, It is so hard for you to let go and decluttering makes you sad and anxious. If you've tried over and over again to declutter and let go, but always end up feeling defeated and frustrated, stop decluttering. At least stop decluttering alone. Ask for help from friends and family or seek professional assistance. You don't have to do this alone. Be vulnerable. Number four, you feel frustrated when there is nothing to donate. If you spent the last month deep in decluttering and woke up this morning feeling annoyed that there was nothing left to toss, remember to take time to celebrate your accomplishments and think about what got you inspired to declutter in the first place. Look at how far you've come. Be joyful. And number five, you are fighting with your family because you gave away their stuff. If you're in a hurry to declutter and don't take your family's feelings into consideration, it might be time to step back and focus on your own stuff. Then choose love over stuff and have a gentle conversation with friends and family about 
why simplicity is important to you. Ask them what's important to them. Let them deal with their own stuff while you deal with yours and talk about it along the way. B, love. If you've been decluttering for a while and are wondering if you've done enough, take some time to live where you are right now. Can you be brave, content, vulnerable, joyful, and loving right here without giving one more thing away? It might not be time to stop decluttering, but if it is, shift your focus to what will make you feel even more brave, content, vulnerable, joyful, and loving. You've got the less part worked out. Now focus on the more. You just listened to the post titled, Five Signs It's Time to Stop Decluttering by Courtney Carver of bemorewithless.com. And now here's a myth you might be familiar with. You only have one immune system. Well, the truth is you have two. Your oral microbiome acts like a second immune system, is your first line of defense against external toxins, infection, and disease. Your microbiome is working 24 seven to help protect you. So what if there was an oral care line that protected your microbiome? Well, there is. Lumino, spelled L-U-M-I-N-E-U-X, is the first oral care line designed to strengthen your oral microbiome by saying no to lots of ingredients that can harm it. That's why their name is pronounced Lumino, because it has no harsh bleaches, no artificial dyes, and no alcohol. Only all naturally derived, delicious, hardworking ingredients that clean, freshen, and whiten, as well as the other guys without the harm. Introduce yourself to Lumino. We are dedicated to illuminating better ideas in oral care. Join us, be illuminating. It's available at Whole Foods, Walgreens, and Sprouts. Find out where you can get Lumino at getlumino.com and enjoy 15% off your first purchase with code OLD. And thank you to Courtney. A more rare kind of post for Minimalist Monday? If you're new here, 99% of the time on Minimalist Mondays, we'll hear reasons why we should minimize our spaces or minds even, tips and tricks on how to do that, where to minimize, challenges you can participate in like the Minimalism Game or Project 333. And then you have today sharing why you shouldn't. And I love that because we're all different and the minimalist lifestyle might not be perfect for where you are at this moment. First of all, it shouldn't be stressful. The whole point of minimalism is to get rid of things so we can focus on other, more important things, which as the minimalists say, aren't really things at all, but instead experiences, relationships, contribution, meaning, things like that. If you've been trying to minimize and all it does is stress you out and take up time, then the whole point is being missed and maybe it's not for you or maybe a less strict approach could do the trick. The point is, as I always say, you have to figure out what's right for you and what's gonna put you in the best place possible. That's what these articles, and I really, am here to help with. So hopefully it is helping. By the way, if it is, and there's someone else you think it can help, sharing this episode or the show in general with someone would be greatly appreciated. But with that, have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you tomorrow in the Tuesday show where your optimal life awaits.